My main concern is that the end of the transitional period is fast approaching, yet progress in implementing the peace agreement has been slow. With only eight months remaining, the window of opportunity to implement the key benchmarks is closing. First, I'd like to encourage the legislature to resume its sittings and to pass the constitution-making process bill. This will govern the drafting of permanent constitution and is critical for tackling the root causes of the protracted crisis in South Sudan by addressing issues of governance as well as federal power and revenue sharing. Second, the graduation of the National Unified Forces is long overdue. The country must have a fully functioning, truly national security apparatus to ensure safe and secure environment, but also as a prerequisite for citizens to vote, to express their will uh, at the polls. Thirdly, the parties must work with the National Constitutional Amendment Committee to review the National Elections Act of 2012. This will provide the legislative framework for launching the electoral process and the formation of the National Elections Commission. I call on all parties to demonstrate collective common purpose, unity of purpose, by working together towards the full implementation of the agreement. I encourage the leaders to take the necessary steps for the country to exit its transitional period through the conduct of free, fair, credible and peaceful elections. I condemn in the strongest terms the violence in eastern and central Equatoria, Unity, Warup and Yongle states, as well as around the ABA administrative uh, area. This year, more than 80% of civilian casualties have been attributed to intercommunal violence and community-based militias. This violence stokes divisions and hampers reconciliation efforts. I'm deeply troubled by reports that sexual and gender-based violence have surged exponentially, uh, on some accounts rising by as much as 500% since uh, the last time we reported. Uh, this impacts most severely on the women and girls who are the mothers, daughters and sisters of this young nation. Less than 30% of the 1.7 billion required for an adequate humanitarian response has been received. Our humanitarian colleagues are having to prioritize or reprioritize the assistance they are providing to the most vulnerable. The gravity of the situation requires South Sudan's leaders to galvanize their efforts towards peace, development and prosperity. As ever, the UN stands ready and willing to support upon the invitation of and in partnership with the government. <laughs>